Yeah. So I'm squad leader Mark Discombe. Uh, I'm now the officer commanding Battle Group Memorial Flight designate. So I've got another three months of fun before I take control of the uh, flight and take command at the end of October. Um, we, over the summer months, we do a lot of fly past different events. Um, and they range from everything from strawberry fairs through to major air shows. Um, it's great for us when we go to a 1940s event because the aircraft are in keeping with that. So it's fantastic to go along. Um, and depending on the location event, sometimes we see some of those exotic 1940s vehicles on the ground. Uh, I joined the BBMF at the end of 2014. So 2015 was my first year actually displaying the aircraft. Uh, prior to that, I had frontline tours flying Jaguar, and just before coming here, I was an instructor at RAF Cranwell, so fairly local, flying the tutor and, and instructing new pilots in the RAF. Okay, the, the flight as a whole will probably do around 600 fly paths a year. I'll probably get about 80 of those uh, done myself, but it does vary as the program um, matures, the weather, aircraft serviceability. Uh, on the weekend in question, on the Sunday, where I come to Spalding, um, it's going to be a fairly long day. So initially I get everyone to do six fly paths, make my way down to Exeter Airport, where I'll turn the aircraft within about two hours, uh, and then make my way back with another eight fly paths, with Spalding being the last of those before I get back to uh, Coningsby. The standard BBMF fly pass is a little bit different to the rest of the Royal Air Force. Uh, we are uh, allowed to do three passes over an event. Um, the height depends on where the event is. So safety is paramount. Uh, the minimum height is 250 feet above any object. However, obviously that will increase the more built up the area is. I think for my initial trip on the way down to Exeter is about an hour and 15 minutes. And on the trip back, it's going to be more like an hour 45 with more events. Um, that'll be quite challenging depending on the aircraft they give me. The smaller Spitfires have limited range. And then as we go through the aircraft, certainly to the Mark 16 behind me, and then the Mark 19, they carry more fuel and they give me a little bit more opportunity to go further. There is, but the problem is we are very limited on the hours we have on the aircraft. So if, for example, we were going to go to Poland and, and celebrate their contribution to the war with this aircraft behind me painted in a Polish color scheme, uh, we would end up using a lot of hours just transferring the aircraft there and back. So we, we look at um, the whole program for the entire year very carefully to make sure we can maximize the amount of people that see it. I think there is, as, as we move on, and the veterans that we can sit down and discuss these things with become fewer and fewer. Um, I think the ability to look back is hugely important. I think also just the aircraft they are, the sound they have, the Merlin engine, there's a melodic um, note to it when it flies over. Um, and even people that aren't interested in aircraft tend to stop and look. So I think it's uh, national pride uh, of something we did and did very well within 1940 and the rest of the war. Again, I think it's, it's a bygone era that people can enjoy. Um, it's an, a good element of being able to party and the people that lived through those um, you know, hard times in the war, when they have the opportunity to party, they would. Uh, it's a, a more simple time um, and just people, I think, enjoy dressing up and enjoying um, not just having fun, but also having fun while remembering a good time.